The Toronto Maple Leafs have signed TJ Brody and Wayne Simmons to contracts. Wayne Simmons, $1.5 million for one year. TJ Brody, four years at $5 million. They address two needs, toughness up front and, uh, well, being good at defense. I have earned this beer. First, I made a video about Wayne Simmons for this channel. And I uploaded it. A minute before it was done processing, it was announced that the Leafs signed TJ Brody. So then I deleted the Wayne Simmons video off of YouTube so that I could add the Brody extension to it. And I also had to make a TJ Brody video for the Sportsnet YouTube channel. Shot both those things, but I ended up filling my card because that's a lot of stuff to talk about. Imported the video on the computer because, well, I don't want to lose that footage. But then I had to shoot some more. So what did I do? I wiped the card. Did you know that when you import footage to iMovie but not the actual computer, it's not importing at all? The import button is the lie button! So this is now the second time I've shot this video. <laughs> so, without further delay, I'm gonna talk about TJ Brody, I'm gonna try to remember all the stuff I just said, and then I'm gonna itchy and scratchy edit the Wayne Simmons video that I shot before and had to delete off of YouTube, and then it'll be one big Franken video and it'll be great. So! TJ Brody. Let me go back in time. Last summer, Kyle Dubas wanted to trade Nazem Kadri to the Calgary Flames in exchange for TJ Brody because he wanted TJ Brody. And then Nazem Kadri said, no, I don't want to go there. And so Dubas said, oh, okay. And then he made the Tyson Berry trade. And the Leafs got Tyson Berry. And then he wasn't great. And then they lost Tyson Berry for nothing. So that trade was looking pretty bad for a while. But you could always say, hey, at least the Leafs got Alexander Kerfoot. I like that guy. And then in 2020, Kyle Dubas is able to sign the defenseman he wanted all along, TJ Brody. So the real loser of that trade between Colorado and Toronto was Calgary. And that's how I'm choosing to look at this. Now I'm well aware that that's a silly way to look at this. I'm also well aware that the Leafs are super tight against the cap and they might have to trade Kerfoot for next to nothing now. But let's not focus on things that haven't happened yet and focus on what has happened. The Leafs got TJ Brody. So, is he good at hockey? Let's ask the stats nerds first. From Dom LeCision to The Athletic, TJ Brody desperately fills a need, but $5 million could be a bit pricey in the final two years for the 30-year-old. This isn't a knock against Dom, but that is every free agent ever. And you might say, uh, Steve, what about the Patrick Marlowe deal? Maybe, maybe don't dismiss that. That is a fair point, but TJ Brody is going to be making less money than Patrick Marlowe per year, and he will be younger at the end of it than Patrick Marlowe was at the beginning of his. So, pricey? Maybe needing to move a first rounder to get rid of him? I, I doubt it. Also, as you can see from the handy dandy chart that Dom posted, uh, TJ Brody, very good at not just offense, but also defense. Obviously, don't just look at the chart that I took a screenshot of. You should go to The Athletic and check out Dom's work. And furthermore, don't just take his word for it. Have you ever heard of The Point? They had some things to say. The Point does a lot of micro stats and tracking like that. Obviously, Brody, not that impressive when it comes to overall production, but he makes a lot of outlet pass completions, stretch pass completions, but check out his D-zone turnover rate. Top 10 in the entire NHL in terms of defensive zone turnover rate, meaning he tends to not turn the puck over in the defensive zone. What do you not want your defenseman to do? Turn the puck over in the defensive zone. TJ, I like you already. Now, you might say, well, Steve, TJ Brody played with Mark Giordano. And to that, I would say, well, Mark Giordano played with TJ Brody. Not to mention, what do you think they're making Brody play? Center? No, he's going to be on the right side, despite being a left-hand shot, and play with Morgan Riley. Let me ask you this. Who is the best defense partner Morgan Riley ever had was a member of the Toronto Maple Leafs? Anyone? Anyone? Dion Phaneuf? That's one I try not to think about very much. Any more recent ones? Nikita Zaitsev? That was a thing for a while. What about last season? Tyson Berry? Yes, very briefly. Cody Ceci? Yes, that was the big one. But who was the best... Gardner? That doesn't count. He barely ever played with a Dermot. It's, it's, you're cute. You're cute. He did, that's never going to happen. R Thank you. Can we all pay attention to Johnny over here? Ron Hainsey. Yep. Morgan Riley's best, most consistent partner on his right. Ron Hainsey. If TJ Brody cannot tiptoe over that bar, I'm going to scream. But by all accounts, he should be able to. We've heard from the stats nerds. What about the people who covered him in Calgary? Here's Eric Francis. Brody was arguably the Flames' best defenseman last year. Bold, Mr. Francis, and will be a tremendous ad for the Leafs. Flames would love to have had his playmaking and versatility back. But that high-risk game he plays at times reminded me of the way Jake Gardner played in Toronto, and he was vilified. Jake Gardner, huh? Ah, yes. I'm ready to hurt again. But something about that stat that said that Brody had one of the best defensive zone turnover rates in the NHL makes me think he's not that much like Gardner. To me, I love this ad. It's something the Leafs needed to do, uh, which is get better players on defense. Does he shoot right? No. 
I'm not all that fussed. Vegas finished Final Four, and they have a bunch of lefties on their decor. Uh, Tampa Bay, their whole left side is monstrous. Hedman, McDonough, Sergachev. I think the lesson I gained there is just have good hockey players, which the Leafs desperately needed on defense. Now, let me ask you this. If the Leafs' top six looks like this, Morgan Riley and TJ Brody on the first pair, Jake Muzzin and Justin Hall in the second pair, Travis Dermott and Miko Lettinen on the third pair, with Rasmus Sandin getting in sometimes. Are you happy? Happiness, it's a very interesting thing. And to that I would say I am happier. I mean, it's hard to really judge Miko Lettinen, we haven't seen him play an NHL game yet, but I look at that top pair and I go, you know what? That could eat a lot of minutes, that could be very good, put up a lot of points, stop the other team from putting up a lot of points. So better? Yeah. Should everyone be satisfied? I don't know about that. But it's still early October. There's lots of moves still to be made. I already mentioned Kerfoot. I think Andreas Janssen is as good as gone, but we don't know. Ilya Mikheyev still needs a contract. Travis Dermott still needs a contract. I'm talking about him like he's in the top six. Guy doesn't even have a deal. And then they also burned Rasmus Sandin the, the first year of his contract. Brody's a big get for the Leafs. I'm not scared of the cap hit. I'm not scared of the term. But should they be done? I'm not sure. And now, for the original video that I uploaded, here's my take on Wayne Simmons joining the Toronto Maple Leafs. And you're about to see me say some stuff that uh, I said a few hours ago that ended up becoming true. Finally, Wayne Simmons is a Leaf! Yes, I already made a video about this on the Sportsnet YouTube channel, but I want to talk a little bit more about Wayne Simmons signing with the Leafs and the lack of other stuff the Leafs did today and why I know that's frustrating and why you should chill. And if I'm telling you to chill, then you need to chill. First and foremost, Wayne Simmons signing with the Toronto Maple Leafs for one year, $1.5 million. I saw that there were some people who didn't like this deal. They didn't enjoy it. And I have three questions for those people. Are you stupid? Are you crazy? Are you dumb? You wanted size. You wanted toughness. You got it. What? That's it? They still need defense? It's October 9th! The earliest the season is going to begin is January 1st. There's still like two months of signings and trades that could happen. Have you seen what's happened over the last 48 hours? Teams are losing their minds. Look who's still available. Alex Petrangelo, Taylor Hall, Mike Hoffman, Evgeny Dodonov, Tyson Berry. And you might have laughed just now and you can shut up because he's still going to make a lot of money. And the fact that none of those guys have signed, none of the guys I just mentioned have signed, that's bunging up the market. It, the market is constipated right now, to quote Darren Dreger. Which, Darren, did you have to? Look, Wayne Simmons analytics, uh, microstats, everything from the past season, th th suck. They're awful. Even Don LeCision from The Athletic, heavy into numbers, people depend on him for his numbers, had this to say. The Wayne Simmons deal is fine value, one year, fills a need, and he rules. And Dom is absolutely right! Because we all know what Wayne Simmons was a few years ago, before all the injuries. He was, if I may edit, a Dutch Vanderlind quote, Red Dead Redemption 2, if you're wondering who that is. Prime Wayne Simmons, move fellas who needed moving, hit fellas who needed hitting, and punch fellas who needed punching. And every time he hopped over the bench, his one mission was to find out what you need. All that while putting up 25 to 30 goals, 50 to 60 points, he was exactly the type of hockey player we were all brought up to love. Now, at 32 years old, on a one year, $1.5 million contract, is he expected to do all of those things? No. Times have changed. He's dealt with a ridiculous amount of injuries, some that he's just tried to play through and others that caused him to miss time. Last season, he had just 25 points, only eight of which were goals, in 68 games split between the Buffalo Sabres and the New Jersey Devils. According to the man himself, he's in the best shape he's been in since 2017, who knows how accurate that is? Things change fast. For 2 minutes and 47 seconds, Steven Stamkos was back, and then he's like, actually, no. But for everyone who was like, why don't the Leafs take a run at Corey Perry? Well, Corey Perry had fewer points in the regular season than Wayne Simmons and is three years older. Resurgences can happen. What's his role in the Leafs? Can't be higher than third line, maybe fourth. Probably fills a nice net front presence on the second power play. But I also just like who Wayne Simmons is and what he could teach the team. I was watching a Wayne Simmons fight today, and he's taking on Dylan McElrath. Hockey DB lists McElrath as 6'5, 231. Simmons is 6'2, a buck 85. And this is a drum I have beaten with the Leafs for at least a couple years now. You don't need to be built like the rock to lay it the smacketh down, or at very least, stick up for yourself. Wayne Simmons has spent his entire career intimidating and dropping the gloves with guys 30, 40, 
50 pounds heavier than him. It's not the whole story, but in many ways, toughness is a mindset. Steve, why are you going to bat so hard for Wayne Simmons? Uh, well, I'm a sucker for a coming home story, but also he grew up in my neighborhood. Like so many people that I grew up with went to school with him. I have somehow never met him myself, but I've also never heard a bad word spoken about him. I just love that this guy's a Toronto Maple Leaf. And I love what he could bring to the team. And I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You really got to go out of your way to get upset about 1.5 one year. I got a lot of questions. Why didn't the Leafs just give that money to Clifford? Why didn't they? According to reports, they tried. According to The Athletic, Clifford was offered north of a mill for three years. And to reiterate my point from earlier, he still could! Free agency isn't over just because the afternoon of October 9th is. And out of the guys who were signed today, or at least that the Leafs were rumored to be in on, did they actually miss out on it? I saw Radko Gudis going to Florida and I was like, oh, okay. Columbus cleared a ton of cap space and apparently they're looking at moving David Savard. Vegas cleared a ton of cap space and they're talking to Alex Petrangelo. Apparently the Leafs are too. But Columbus and Vegas, they are really bunging up the market. Tampa is so cap strapped they put Tyler Johnson on waivers. Mackenzie Wegar from the Panthers is apparently available. There's still Troy Stetcher. There's still this, there's still that. There are so many names still available. Nothing would surprise me at this point other than the Leafs doing nothing that would surprise me so that is it for this one thank you very much for watching click like if you like this video click subscribe if you really liked it tell all your friends choo choo